cloud and broadcast. Uh, and then we'll just wait a minute uh, as seven turns, we can start to see who populates the room. And we are live. Good evening. This is the planning board meeting for August 18th, 2021. As chair, I will open with the roll call because we are uh, meeting remotely. Holden Clark. Here. Beth DeLeal. Here. Ann Gardner. Here. Bob Kalp. Here. Liam McGavern is absent. Rick Tainter. Here. MJ Verde is absent. Don Walters. Here. Bonnie Sontag here. We also have Linda Guthrie, our uh, note taker. And from the office, I only see Andy Port, the director at the moment. I'm gonna go through our agenda and then we will start with the first item, which is a joint public hearing with the city council. And at that point, Councillor Shand will open her meeting. Um, after the joint public hearing, the rest of the planning board agenda covers the following items. Minor site plan review for 8688 Prospect Street continued from July 7th. A request for extension at 36 Colby Farm Lane. A request for a lot release at Port Village, Lot 22. Approval of minutes from our last meeting and updates from the chair and the planning director. So at this point, let me hand it over to Councillor Shand to open her meeting and then to open the joint public hearing. Uh, thank you, Chair Sontag. So uh, this is Heather Shan, Chair of the Planning and Development Committee. Uh, I'll take roll. Uh, I will note that Councillor Igerman is absent tonight, so roll call will be brief. Uh, Councillor Wallace, are you present? Present. All right, so the Planning and Development Committee is present. So Andy, would you like to introduce what the public hearing is about? Uh, sure, thank you. Um, I would give deference if uh, if Councilor Connell shows up uh, as he is the sponsor for the ordinance, um, but I'm happy to provide an overview if that's all right. I am texting him right now looking for him. Oh, no worries whatsoever. I, I'm happy to provide an overview. Um, so we have a, um, let me just pull up the uh, map here. Sorry, I have a, a, a several different PDFs. Um, one that I think may be more helpful is uh, starting off is this one right here. Um, this is a, uh, a GIS map. I apologize that it's oriented um, with north to the right side. Uh, and that's because we could fit more on the, the page or the screen that way. But uh, this map actually illustrates the old I-95 corridor, what we all refer to as the old I-95 corridor. And um, what you'll see is there are several sub parcels, but um, uh, that land was transferred from the Commonwealth to the city some years ago. Uh, the smaller parcels that you see uh, towards the existing or current I-95 uh, roadbed, those are uh, have restrictions where they have to be kept as open space, essentially. Um, so there wouldn't be any development potential there of any kind. Um, but the uh, the right of way component, obviously, we're all familiar with the um, the uh, bike path that goes through there uh, and the trail improvements that have been done over the years by uh, volunteers and, and um, city officials and so forth. Um, there has been discussion about the fact that and I, I would defer to Councilor Card on this, but certainly has been discussion um, and um, uh, with the Energy Advisory Committee and others about uh, increasing the city's uh, net zero capability uh, to generate its own electricity to keep it, you know, on house, so to speak. Um, we try to have renewable energy on municipal facilities. Um, we have a council in order that's before the council right now talking about um, energy efficiency and reporting and, um, and trying to make sure that new facilities are um, energy efficient. And it seems to me that, um, and I'll defer to Council Connell, but I, I do agree uh, with his sponsorship of this because I think it pr provides potential uh, for renewable energy along a corridor that has very little impact on other areas of the city, uh, you know, particularly residential areas. Um, there is a uh, permitting process before the Zoning Board of Appeals that would apply here as it does in the business park. Um, there are offsets to residential districts uh, or neighborhoods anyway, uh, even within this, uh, this corridor here, uh, but it's a rather large area uh, and there is potential despite the uh, presence of, uh, you know, a, an array of wetlands in there, there is potential uh, pending a wetland survey, a definitive wetland survey uh, to find upland spots and to see where we could get renewable energy from this, uh, this corridor. Um, and that will be up to the city through an RFP process or 
um, partnership with a private entity, of course, uh, you know, on a go forward basis. But the zoning, I think the intent here was to make sure that the zoning would not preclude that renewable energy corridor from, um, from being a possibility. I would also note for the record that uh, the current ordinance that uh, for the plan for the zoning board of appeals that reviews uh, the installation or approval of any turbines uh, that, that would happen here as well. Um, if that were to happen down the road, there is a provision specifically speaking to Flickr uh, and requiring that applicants address that through um, their electronic equipment and sensors uh, such that they can demonstrate that they will not cause issues that I think we, uh, the city had seen in the past um, due to the, uh, the Mark Ritchie turbine um, when that was originally installed. So there is something to address that uh, on a go forward basis. Um, if, with that, I guess I would, I would turn it back to you or to Councilor Connell Weiss easier. I would defer to Councillor Connell since he is the one who is uh, sponsoring this legislation. Councillor Connell. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I believe that uh, the summary that that uh, um, that uh, Mr. Port provided is, is accurate. Um, this land is currently um, uh, subject to um, a lot of, uh, how should we put it? Uh, illegal partying by kids. Maybe that's the most blunt way to describe it. And, and not much beyond that, except for, and I, I point this out and then respect it, the creation of a uh, pedestrian nature trail. Um, the development of this into uh, a clean energy corridor uh, obviously would have to respect the wetlands that are, are uh, in that area. I see that uh, the chairman of the Conservation Commission is in attendance and he might want to comment on that. Um, we certainly uh, don't uh, want to um, uh, invade or, or, or disturb any of the wetlands uh, that, that uh, um, uh, exist in this area, uh, but it is unused land with the exception of uh, the nature trails. And it, it seemed to me that this is a, an ideal parcel for the city to demonstrate its commitment to clean energy and essentially putting our money and our, our efforts where our mouths are. And that is, uh, we acknowledge, uh, as we did earlier today at the Resiliency Committee, uh, the uh, impacts of uh, global climate change. Uh, and this gives us one more opportunity, uh, not a huge one, but I think a meaningful one to demonstrate the city's commitment to uh, promoting clean energy uh, that does not put carbon into the atmosphere. A group of wind turbines, for example, and I don't know if, if uh, 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 the, um, the description by, um, uh, by uh, Andy Port um, uh, satisfied you in this regard, but one of the first things we did was ask the, um, the um, uh, Mass DOT if they would have any objection to turbines, wind turbines going there. And, and to the best of my knowledge, their response was, hmm, no, no problem. Uh, an alternative might be the development of a photovoltaic field in this area, a parcel somewhat similar uh, in terms of total acreage, but not in configuration to that along Rabbit Road in Salisbury, which has been very successful. And um, the city could, uh, in a number of different ways, uh, solicit proposals from private developers, enter into a negotiation by which the city could either obtain a credit or, uh, or uh, a monetary, uh, an energy credit or a monetary um, uh, award uh, based on the, uh, a portion of the uh, profits for the, um, uh, in, of the development um, of, you know, clean energy. So, so there are a couple of ways it can go, but a precursor to all that would be um, whether or not this um, could be rezoned in a way that would permit us to explore those possibilities. Now, um, one of my fellow city councilors raised the question of spot zoning. And as I understand the definition of spot zoning, this would not necessarily um, be considered by the courts as a spot zone because uh, the abutting properties are primarily wetlands, uh, some industrial properties, uh, and the interstate highway. Um, I don't think any of those might object to the change in designation here as a spot zone. 
but I would leave it to the committees if, if that is on their minds, uh, on your minds, to uh, seek an opinion from uh, KP Law about the applicability of spot zoning uh, in this particular instance. And, and I'd be interested to see what they, they say. As I read uh, the, the case law uh, uh, in, in, in this regard, uh, I, I don't believe it would fall into the category of a spot zone. Uh, but you know, I'm not an attorney. Uh, that's just my layman's reading of, of the decisions on spot zoning, which uh, a question has been raised by one of my colleagues. So I think it's probably something we ought to uh, nail down before you proceed too much farther. So I'd be happy to answer questions to, to the extent I can. Um, I've consulted with a number of individuals, uh, especially in the town of Salisbury, where they developed that PV field uh, to see what the, the, the uh, uh, you know, the, that, the, the problems uh, they experienced there. And, and frankly, both the town manager and chairman of the selectmen said, no, nah, we really didn't have any problems there. Uh, the abutters weren't aggrieved. Uh, and it's been a, a net plus for the town of Salisbury. My final comment would be this. If we are indeed a green community, and that's how we promote ourselves, uh, what better introduction to Newburyport to people coming up the interstate corridor than to have them see a series of wind turbines or a photovoltaic array uh, as they approach the city from the south uh, and, and are about to cross the Story Avenue area. Um, I like the atmospherics of that, no pun intended. Uh, but more than that, I, I like the possible reality of developing this property in a way that uh, respects uh, the uh, environmental sensitivity of the area and is consistent with the philosophy that we have espoused and promoted over the past two decades. All right. Thank you, Councillor Connell. Sure. Um, Chair Sontag, I think I would like to open it up to public comment right now, if that works for you. Yes, that would be fine. And then we can have comments from you know, other members of the council and the planning board with that uh, public comment in our heads. Thank you. Okay, so as typical for public comment on Zoom, we just need you to raise your electronic hand. And I see Joe Texera and then Stephen Moore. So Joe, I believe you're able to speak. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, um, well, uh, as a, a person- Joe, I need your, your uh, address. Oh, sorry, Joe Texera, uh, 44 Hale Street. Thank you. Like I require everybody else to do in my meetings. Um, <laughs> I, uh, as, as someone who's, you know, drives an electric car and has, uh, you know, 6.2 kilowatts on my roof of uh, solar, um, I'm abundantly aware of the, the need for uh, um, expanding the city's um, green footprint. Uh, this area, however, I have a lot of concerns with. Um, I, I can't come up with any kind of place where we could put in a full array uh, of, uh, of turbines. Uh, there's most of this uh, roadbed is within a hundred foot buffer and a rather large percentage of that is within the 25 foot no disturb uh, because the little river uh, winds its way under the uh, roadbed. Uh, so I, I can't envision getting a lot of uh, either solar uh, without obliterating most of the trees near the, uh, the exit there uh, or any uh, turbines up there. Um, it, it, it just, it's not a great, great place that I, I don't think is a great place for it. I think the industrial or the business park is a much better place, but um, I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Joe. Uh, the next name whose hand is up, I see is Stephen Moore. I believe you Stephen, you'll need to unmute as well. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I'm the vice chair of the Conservation Commission, so I concur with a lot of what Joe said. 
Um, Mr. Moore, can we get your address, please? Yes, uh, 10 North Atkinson Street. Thank you. Um, the Little River, um, you know, this area is the headwaters of the Little River. And during heavy rainstorms, it contributes to a lot of the flooding down in the industrial park. Um, if we were to put in either a solar array or wind turbines, there would have to be a whole lot of trees cut that would increase, I believe, the, the water flow coming off the land and down into the river and down to the industrial park. Um, also, the, the trails there, um, the bike path and the Little River Nature Trail are, are heavily used by members of the public. Um, it's become a, a good site for bird watching. Again, if you put one of these arrays in there, um, you would probably eliminate a lot of that. Uh, I'm unaware of kids using it as a party place, but I can see where that might happen. Yeah. But if you're out there in the daytime, um, it's mostly people just riding their bikes and walking and observing wildlife and, and watching the birds. Um, also, um, I mean, it, there's talk that there really aren't any abutters, but um, the people on Morin Road, which are just to the east of this, um, I, I can't help but think that they would be subject to the to the flicker from the, from the blades. And I don't know how you remediate that, but I, I would think that they would be unhappy with it. Also, um, I do a lot of hiking up in New Hampshire, and I've gone past places where there's lots of wind turbines. And one of the things, they have them fenced off. They have a large area around them so you can't get near them. And there are large warning signs of ice coming off the blades in the wintertime. The blades, you know, they, they get iced up and when they're turning rapidly, they throw them off. That would not be a good mix for people that are out there snowshoeing and cross country skiing on, on the old roadbed. Um, so, and I, I hear Barry's comment that what, what a great view that would be coming up I-95 and see a bunch of wind turbines. Well, I'm kind of of the opposite view. You, before you get to Hill Street, you're looking out over the common pasture and all those cattle grazing out there. And then you, you come under the drip bridge and you see a bunch of turbines and solar arrays. I, I don't know that that's the welcome I want to new report. Um, and again, you know, put these out in the industrial park or somewhere else, I'd be all for it. But I don't think this is a great location for it. Thank you. Sorry, is there any further comment? And thank you, Mr. Moore. All right. Chair Sontag. And oh, well, I see Councillor Connell has his hand up. Councillor Connell? Yeah, I, um, I, I appreciate what both uh, Joe and Stephen have, have contributed here. And uh, I, I don't want anyone to misconstrue my intent. Uh, it is not to circumvent uh, the authority of the CONCOM to uh, control here um, the protection of wetlands. It is not. I think that perhaps, though, uh, these, these, the protection of wetlands and the use of some adjoining property um, are not incompatible. And the, the one comment that, that, that Mr. Moore made that I, I have to challenge is, is this one about the snow and ice being thrown from the blades. We have an example, although it was cited in a place where we didn't adequately consider the impact of flicker. I, I clearly acknowledge that that was the case. However, um, we did a fair amount of research going into that, and we looked at communities such as Hull, we looked at Quincy, we looked at communities to the south that had developed turbines, and that was what guided our consideration uh, when we were looking at the uh, Mark Ritchie site as a candidate for a wind turbine. What is our experience in this climate over the lifetime of that turbine? I can't think of a single instance where ice was being thrown off that uh, turbine at the Mark Ritchie uh, woodworking site. Um, and, and I would challenge anybody to do so. Um, the, uh, it's been operating effectively and productively um, uh, since its, its installation. So I think that the analogy going up uh, into New Hampshire or uh, perhaps Maine, I don't know where, uh, Steve, I don't know where you'd hiked. 
um, doesn't necessarily hold because again, uh, the climate there is different. It's a higher elevation. The likelihood of ice and and I have been up at the top of uh, Mount Washington before. What looked in what looked like a a uh, um, a, a pretty benign day um, when when it didn't turn out to be so benign up in that altitude. Uh, it's a different climate than what we have here, and uh, I, I think in that respect um, that that particular fear is something I I, I actually have to challenge. Uh, otherwise, I certainly would look forward to working with the CONCOM to look at the possibilities there and any proposal that came as a result of this rezoning would have to meet the requirements of all of our um, uh, um, Conservation Commission restrictions. I mean, that that's just, it goes without saying. Um, but I, I, I think that if we look at these possibilities, um, you know, we look at all of these possibilities. Maybe there are others in the industrial zone um, that are also uh, worthy of additional consideration. Uh, I just thought that this was one that is underutilized and, and had opportunities uh, that uh, people who uh, develop um, clean energy proposals uh, might be interested in examining. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Bonnie, do we want to bring it back in and have the internal discussion with the planning board? Yes, I'll call for first uh, just comments from planning board members at this point. Uh, Bonnie, this is Don. Um, I'd like to start off, if I may, um, just a couple of comments. First, I believe the commentary on solar photovoltaic is somewhat moot. In, in to, and the reason I say that right now, for the interpretation of mass general law, as well as the planning and development department, uh, solar facilities are permitted anywhere uh, within uh, the city. So therefore, I believe that this ordinance specifically provides the optionality for uh, wind turbines in the corridor. Uh, I, I think uh, others, in, and I agree with Barry, of course, I think with respect to the environmental issues, whatever, I believe it's binary. In other words, you're so many feet from this and buffer to me, it's, it's black and white. So I think there's a bright line determination there. Uh, I also will agree, and I happen to be a, an engineer that's worked extensively in the renewable energy sector. Uh, not only do you find it very seldom, not impossible, depending upon atmospheric conditions, but currently uh, engineering design and safeguards can provide uh, items where they would, uh, under very unusual atmospheric conditions, that you could have the turbine shut down. So I don't think that is an issue. I believe the biggest issue uh, that I'll leave to others to address is in the current zoning ordinance for wind turbines, it talks about the flicker. And I think if you find out for most people, there, there's a flicker and also a low humming noise. And at least with respect to the flicker, the, um, the, the ordinance talks about significant. And so significant doesn't mean 1%, doesn't mean 10%, it's subjective. And so I'll, I'll end my commentary on that point. Thank you. Thank you. I see that Councillor Connell has his hand up again. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I should have taken it down. I'll remove it. Okay. Yeah. Any other planning board members would like who would like to speak, please speak up. Uh, <clears throat> yes, this is Ann. I think um, my concerns would be the negative impact potentially on um, both wildlife and I'm quite a birder, um, as well as the enjoyment of the use of the trails. Um, and also, as one of the speakers mentioned, potential um, flicker on Morin Road. Um, depending on what was put up there and how closely, um, that could be an issue. And that certainly has been a, a terrible issue with the one turbine we now have in our city. So um, <clears throat> while I know we want to work toward a green community, um, I just see some uh, serious potential negative impacts uh, for this location and for those reasons. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Yeah, yeah, I have a comment similar to that. I guess I have some concerns about it. I see in the ordinance it talks about having a minimum distance of 300 feet from residential zoning district. And um, and I saw that there was some, con uh, some comment that that was too little and it might be changed to a larger number um, by some of the other city councilors. So I just, I wonder about that. But even with the 300 feet, that would limit it from the, um, the Moore Road area quite a bit. And if it were expanded to, uh, to 1,500 feet, which was one comment, that would almost uh, exclude the entire area from having wind turbines, it seems to me. So um, I'm just not sure how many uh, you would even get in there. I do have some concerns about that and, and how much clearing and, and the, um, the idea of having uh, fenced off areas surrounding it and with how much of that would, would block off of the trail and, and so forth. I've walked that trail many times myself. I have seen some, uh, some litter that maybe came from uh, kids partying occasionally, but uh, yeah, otherwise <laughs> I've been there during the day. Thanks. Okay, next please. Uh, Bonnie, is Rick? Yeah. Um, so when I initially saw this proposal, I, I thought it was a really great idea to use the kind of um, leftover space between the uh, trail and the highway. Um, what I'm hearing tonight uh, makes me understand a little bit more some of the environmental constraints, but even if, if we can't get a field of wind turbines, it might be possible, um, say in the, in the Crow Lane area to even get one. Um, but that, I think this whole, this ordinance brings up a bigger issue, which is that we, we should be looking for places, not just city owned property, but other places in the city where uh, we could promote renewable energy, including wind turbines. And as I look at the, the zoning map and the, um, the estimated wetlands overlay and so forth, um, and, and just recalling uh, bicycling through fields of wind turbines on farms, it seems like this is a, a, really, a really good complementary use for agriculture. So I would um, like us to think about whether it's possible to uh, be a little bit broader and not just have it for this particular area of the Ag Con district, but, but perhaps some other parts of the, the city as well. You know, I, again, I don't know anything about the farm operation or the um, or the, the plans or anything like that, but just looking at the Mayette farm, for example, there's huge areas of farmland far away from residences um, that are out of the wetlands. And if we can do anything to um, make sure that that land, that, that agriculture is successful, uh, you know, the, the traditional way to do it is to put a cell tower there, but maybe a, um, a turbine tower is even a better thing. So I would, even if this doesn't go forward, I would like us to think more broadly about how we can um, incorporate uh, wind energy in some of our other areas of the, of the city, not just the industrial district, which is where it's allowed now. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Bonnie, this is, uh, this is Bob Kaup. Um, I guess I, I have always looked at, at interstate highway corridors as uh, tremendously disruptive to begin with from, from an environmental standpoint, uh, from, from noise, et cetera, and, and have always thought that those established corridors were ideal locations for, for renewable energy because you know, they, they had already established some separation and isolation from surrounding uses. So, so at that high level, uh, I, I would be supportive of, of studying this further because I think as, as you look at other opportunities within Newburyport, I, I think there will be other concerns about proximity to neighborhoods, proximity to other uses, uh, this this still feels like a location where adjacent to, you know, a, a, an existing interstate highway, uh, there there are some 
interesting possibilities there that that we should look at in more detail. Okay, thank you. Beth, would you do you have any comments? Oh, you need to unmute though. Yeah, my um, only com I guess my question is um, whether there is whether the wetlands have been delineated and if there is anything that might um, show us where the wetlands are um, on these parcels. I mean, I, I do think, you know, if anything were to be permitted, it would go through the CONCOM and um, through the ZBA, I guess, to the ZBA would deal with the flicker, the CONCOM would deal with the wetlands issues. So, um, you know, I think those, while I would be concerned about those issues, they would be looked at and it would be permitted or um, not allowed accordingly. Um, but Andy, I did just wonder if there was anything that would show that showed the wetlands. Uh, yes, can I address that? Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this map here uh, is the best that this office can provide right now based on available uh, mapping and data. Uh, because we have not had a, a wetland scientist go out there and flag it recently, we're, we're basing this on the available data from the state and the city uh, in terms of um, aerial photography, wetlands, and um, and um, you know best estimates of where streams and things like that are going through. Um, it, you know, in a nutshell, yes, there are extensive wetlands in that area, um, but um, I think you know one thing to keep in mind here is um, it, the distance here between the the homes on Warren Road. Um, it's about 300 feet to about halfway through that corridor there. Um, that's about a 300 foot you know distance there. So there is. Um, there is a, an area down here where, um, you know, further south, where it is possible for, you know, potentially upland to be located. Uh, I would agree with Councilor Connell that, you know, wetlands issues uh, would need to be addressed and, um, you know, compliance with those regulations would be expected. And I think certainly the placement of any features would be still subject to further city review uh, and permitting. Um, but I think the question here tonight is whether or not we would want our zoning to preclude the uh, renewable uh, or clean energy corridor. Uh, here from taking place. I, I agree with uh, the comments that Rick Tainter had made a moment ago um, that, you know, there might be some other areas of the city where this would be beneficial. Um, that might be something for a future amendment just based on what, what we have before us uh, in this, this particular amendment. Um, but I, I concur that the same rationale might apply otherwise. But, um, but this does seem like an area that, um, like Councilor Collins says, is a gateway to the city. Uh, it's not very much impact on, on other residences. Uh, residential districts. Morin Road is really the only one that, that comes in proximity. If you actually look at the um, the um, the map, the zoning map, um, that's the residential district. So really, uh, it's the upper or northern portion here to the right uh, that would have restrictions on where the turbines could go. Um, but further south, there would be some possibility, and that in fact is industrial. I do think that a fair amount of the open space in the city um, it has various reasons why, why turbines may not be possible there, and um, that may require some further review. Uh, but I do think that uh, if, if a contractor is going in here with city permission or, um, you know, in conjunction with the city to create energy for the city, or that we are essentially um, getting paid for and, and using um, to offset the city's costs, um, it seems to me that there's also potential there to have that same co contractor work um, as they're pulling out, clean up some of the trail uh, and, and improve it um, from where it is today. Um, we do know that there's been various improvements done on our piecemeal basis over time, but um, that's a um, good and you know potentially mixed result in terms of its impact on on um, you know the site or the area. But um, this is an opportunity to have a relatively small footprint, I would say, with the turbines. Uh, the solar, I, I, I would question the feasibility just based on tree coverage and um, alignment and, and you know, width and so forth, um, as I think Joe Chixera had mentioned earlier. But but I do think that um, that uh, there's a potential here for you know one or two or three turbines potentially. Um, and I, I wouldn't want to see the zoning preclude that. Um, it's up to the council and the mayor and council, of course, as to what to do for zoning with recommendation from the planning board. But I think the question is whether we don't want our zoning to preclude it, leaving the site details uh, to be addressed through the usual permitting processes and further review, um, whereupon the city would have to actually issue a request for proposals anyway. So those are my comments. Well, Beth took my comment. Um, am I unmuted? Yeah. Um, Beth took my comment. Um, and I. Um, about wetlands, I actually feel a bit uncomfortable going forward with a recommendation um, to adopt this amendment without understanding a little bit better what the topography out there is all about. 
Um, normally, I'd say, yeah, leave it to the permitting uh, process, but there are too many questions about where it would be really feasible to use any of this space for um, wind turbines. And I would like to see um, some more information about you know, where the trees are, uh, the blocks of trees, where the rail trail is. I want a good illustration of all of this and the wetlands, you know, if there's, it doesn't have to be any more precise maybe than this, if we know those are the big blocks. But somehow I would feel, I would feel um, um, a little more comfortable giving this further consideration if I knew more about what it looked like out there. Is that possible, Andy? Uh, well, again, like I said, this is the best wetlands estimate we can do. So uh, I think it does provide the, the best delineation we can for that. Uh, we're certainly welcome to add any or happy to add any additional information that that can be located, you know, by others. We haven't had uh, any appropriation of funds for, you know, actual on the ground survey of, of wetlands. Um, we can see from the aerial photograph the, the old roadbed, uh, you know, slash bike path if you will, um, you know, we're happy to add anything to this that might be helpful there, maybe some dimensional, um, yeah. you know, dimensions might be helpful to get an idea of, you know, how much space is there, uh, you know, and so forth, but um, I'm not sure beyond that, what we could show at this point. Well, dimensional information would be helpful too, because we'd see exactly where the 300 feet um, take us to off of um, the property line or the, the whole parcel line. Um, and then we could consider some of the alternatives that have been offered um, around distance. Um, I, I'm, I'm not ready to make a recommendation on this yet. And it doesn't sound like several other people are either. Um, and I, I just brought up for your, uh, because folks had asked about the, the distance there, uh, the map you're seeing is just showing on our GIS about, it's 308, I was trying to get estimate about 300, but uh, about 300 feet, you know, there you can see going through the corridor uh, off of Moore Road, the, the last residential lot, just for comparison. Uh, but we can certainly provide um, some, uh, a map with further labels to get, give you an idea of uh, how this fits in there. So I see two hands. I see Councilor Connell, who's been up for a while, then Councilor Wallace. I, I would defer to Councilor Wallace. Well, um, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were first, Barry. So <laughs> right. the, the reason I, I popped my hand up was that um, I want to point out something that I perceive as a flaw in our existing um, uh, wind turbine, uh, the uh, existing uh, uh, statute that permits wind turbines. Uh, and that is that we essentially took a shot glass, put it on the map and said, here's the diameter around which uh, flicker is going to be a problem. And that's misleading because uh, flicker, which is a real issue and something we should consider seriously in its proximity to residential neighborhoods, uh, is primarily in the east and west access, depending on the, and particularly during particular times of the day. Uh, when the sun is very low in the sky. North and south, it really doesn't affect. So uh, I think that, that our discussion should acknowledge that and perhaps be broadened as uh, Mr. Tainter suggested to look at other sites and maybe the all our, our existing ordinance to, to put a sharper point on it. Um, the, the, um, so, so that was the only point that I really wanted to res uh, respond to. And, and the other thing I would like to say is that I think um, that uh, Chair Sontag um, is alluding to the, um, the need to know this property a little bit better. And that might uh, be uh, something we could do and, and uh, take a, a site walk uh, with um, members of the CONCOM and uh, other interested parties so that we understand this property better. Not all of us have walked it and, and are, are familiar with it. That's all. Well, I think that's a great idea, Councillor. Um, Councillor Wallace. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to put in my two cents here. Um, and, and as we talk through, I have more and more questions that are coming into my head. So I agree with Chair Sontag that, you know, we may not have the answers tonight. There's a, a lot more information that we may want to do and do our research. And I completely agree with a site walk. I think that would be a great idea. Um, and it's, 
it's an interesting policy question because who doesn't want green energy and who doesn't want to protect open space? So, you know, it may come down to that. But the first thing that did come into my mind was just what are going to be the site impacts, wetlands, clearing of trees, how much of a footprint do these have, maintenance, access roads, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it is zoned AgCon, and that was done probably about two years ago before I was on the council. And, and I would think that the AgCon was kind of, there, there's a reason that properties were zoned AgCon was to protect open space um, where needed. Now we have the highway on one side, but we have, a, you know, a very large, you know, well kept, well used, um, you know, trail system. And then I also look at, you know, on the other side, and then I also look at the river and I'm wondering if those are perennial streams. And if so, then we would be dealing with riverfront issues, which is a 200 foot buffer for wetlands. So anyways, I, but I also think um, Rick Tainter's thoughts of, well, it, it brings a question of where, where would we want to put you know, turbines perhaps. So I think it, I think it's a good exercise, but we just have to do a little more, a little more homework. Thank you. So I'll, I will put my two cents in as the ward three counselor who has uh, been to the community that is impacted by the turbine since it's in ward three. And I have heard about Flickr many times. And I, I think we definitely need to make sure that any, if we were to do a wind turbine in this area, we need to make sure that that is not going to impact the neighbors. I wholeheartedly agree on that one. Um, and I agree with Council Wallace and Chair Sontag. I think we need some more uh, input on this area. And I, I agree, a site map sounds like a very good idea. I mean, I'm sorry, a site walk sounds like a good idea. So uh, with that being said, Andy, I think we have a few tasks to do before uh, I think anybody wants to move on this one. So. Sure. Um, I would just ask for a week or two to prepare the revised map or additional map. And then um, I, I guess I would defer to you as to whether or not you want to schedule uh, a site walk or do individuals. Sure. Um, we can certainly walk, uh, work on that one with uh, the chair of the CONCOM and Councillor Wallace, I mean, sorry, Councillor um, Connell and Wallace and uh, the folks on the planning board. We can work on that one outside of this painting. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, it was also brought up at the beginning that we wanted to make sure that KP Law put their two cents in on whether they consider this spot zoning or not. And I will follow up with them on that to answer that question as well. Um, I would also note, um, I, I'll defer to you as chair, uh, Stephen Moore has his hand raised. I, I suspect that might be to offer um, to walk the site uh, knowing the wetlands, but I'll, I'll defer to you. Oh, I, I have no problem with that. Um, Mr. Moore, you're more than welcome to speak. Okay, um, I just wanted to, I, I'd be more than happy to go on a site walk with anybody that wants to go. Unfortunately, I'm leaving tomorrow morning and gonna be gone for six weeks. Um, so. Well, I guess that takes you out of the running then. <laughs> I think it does, but I, I'm pretty sure Joe would be more than happy to, to go. Okay. Um, I right. just wanted to also comment that those are perennial streams out there for the most part. Um, so that the 200 foot buffer would apply and also on the wetlands, um, the furthest south one there, which ends in kind of a straight line, um, that's all wetlands to the south of that. There's a huge beaver swamp out there. Um, and the only other comment I would have, you know, in, in looking at alternative sites, um, is that Jerry Mayette, who's the farmer who has all the hay fields along Hale Street, um, those would probably be an ideal place and he might be willing to lease a portion of his land to 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 somebody for um wind turbines out there all right well Keep thank, you. Chicken style, huh? <laughs> thank you for that comment mr moore appreciate yeah. it Thanks. um i see Councilor wallace's hand is back up Councilor wallace yes just one one more question for Councilor connell i i don't know if there's an answer to it but um, is this an area where the city has been approached by outside developers or, or whatnot for wind turbines or would the city do some sort of like RFP to attract people in or is that too far in the future? Just wondering like what if, if this went through or say somewhere else, what would the process be 
sure. of actually, you know, getting these constructed and permitted, et cetera. I'd be happy to answer that if the chair would recognize me. Certainly, Councillor Connell. Yeah, the, the short answer to that is very short. It's, it's two letters and the answer is no. We have not been approached by anyone. Uh, this is something that uh, emerged during a fever dream I had, I guess. I don't know, it just popped into my head. I said, well, why don't we put some this land or some other parcels, which I think Rick Tainter suggested and I agree with, uh, to some other use that, that we hadn't imagined previously. Uh, however, when I ran this past members of the Energy Advisory um, board and, and Don Walters, uh, I guess I'm going to point the finger to Don because he's so much more knowledgeable in this area than I am. Um, they said, yeah, you know, that, that's worth considering. And uh, I, here's an example I will use. T. Boone Pickens, the famed Texas oil man, is one of the um, um, quietest but most um, uh, productive developers of wind energy in the world. And what he has done in West Texas, where the wind blows across the land at a, at a frenetic pace and the soil is not very rich, it's only good for cattle grazing primarily, uh, when he hadn't been digging it up for oil. Um, he went out and bought parcels of land. But, I'm sorry, take that back. Did not buy them, but leased parcels of land that were grazing lands from, um, from uh, cattle ranchers and erected a, an array of wind turbines. And his plan is to put thousands of them up. The advantage being, um, you know, the, the greater the number, the cheaper per unit installation is. He has his own crews setting them up. The, um, the, the, the rancher benefits from the lease. He gets some, some money in his pocket that he didn't have previously. And the cows don't really care if this thing's spinning overhead. So um, it, it's kind of an interesting model. And it, that's what kind of provoked me to think, well, if T. Boone Pickens um, can do this, why can't Newburyport? It may not be the best, best location, but it's one. Let's, let's expand our, 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 our vision a bit and look and see if there are others or other ways to do it. And, and that's what I'm hoping we can uh, come out of this exercise uh, with. And, and that is, uh, you know, looking at, at the, the, the footprint of the city in ways that we haven't looked at it previously. Thank you, Councillor. I don't think I ever expected T-Bone Pickens to be used as a reference in yeah. a planning board meeting. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. So- uh, number one purchaser of Vetsis wind turbines. Good to know. All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, Andy, I think you have your work cut out for you and uh, Chair Sontag, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but I guess we could probably vote to uh, keep this in committee for a while? Well, we actually, if we're gonna continue it, we have to continue it to a date certain. Okay. We have one, did you want to pick? I don't know. I know we have another joint public hearing for um, the second meeting in September. That's right, we uh, do. So we can't put it out there. The first meeting in, in September would be too soon. Right. So I don't know what the date is, but maybe the next meeting in the first meeting in October. The give that for me. Or 13th. The next, gonna... Yeah, we'll do either one. It doesn't, I, I think we certainly have enough time by the first meeting in October if it's October 6th. Is it the first Wednesday or the second Wednesday in October? Oh, it should be the first, sorry. So it would be October the 6th. Yep. I um, mean, Chairs, could I just inter uh, interject? Um, I think you had mentioned, Chair Sontag, that the uh, September 15th, we plan on having an amendment uh, that's reviewed. I just wanted to ask, it, is there any rationale for having, since you're meeting that night already, uh, doing it together? Or I wasn't sure if I understood. Um... Uh, well, I assumed we didn't want to have two on the same night. But if you okay. manage, uh, no, just to hear me out. If you manage the planning board agenda so that um, there are just very minor um, applications or continuances to deal with that night. We could certainly handle two. I'm fine with that. What is the other topic we have on the 15th? Uh, that is the parking amendment. Uh, oh, to, okay. Yeah. So I, I, I believe that's a relatively straightforward one. I, you know. Yeah, I would be happy doing it, with, doing it on the 15th as well, Bonnie, 
if Andy, you can get all the data, and I think probably by then we could probably have a site walk. Sure, I think that's doable. Okay. All right. This, this will not affect the meeting, but just to be open with everything, I will not be there that night. But Rick will be chairing the meeting, and I'm sure it will go just fine. Uh, so, if I could also just interject for the record uh, for continuances, uh, the planning board is migrating to a, um, a hybrid type meeting where we are both in person and remote. So the plan is to have that access uh, for the meetings going forward in September. We're working out the, the details still, but um, we would expect the physical location to be at the senior center for this continuance uh, and the remote location to be uh, the you know, same Zoom link on the city's website, but look to the city calendar for confirmation of details. Okay, thank you for that update. All right, so I'll take them. Um, yeah, is it okay for me to do it first? Doesn't much matter. Okay, I'll take a motion to continue this joint public hearing to October 6th. No, September 15th. 15th. Oh, September 15th. I just wrote down the wrong. Thank you. <laughs> That's why I have all of you there to catch me. Thank you. September 15th. May I have a motion? So moved on. Thank you, Don. Second? I'll second, Alden. Alden, thank you. I'll call roll of those who are present. Alden? Yes. Beth? Yes. Ann? Yes. Bob? Yes. Rick? Yes. Don? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Thank you. All right. Councilor Wallace, would you like to follow suit? Sure, a motion to continue the hearing to September 15th. All right, all those in favor, Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Shand, yes. All right, uh, Councilor Wallace, would you like to take a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, all in favor, Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Shand, yes. All right, uh, thank you all. We will let you continue your meeting. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you everyone for their comments and for their uh, uh, willingness to consider this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Connell. Appreciate your time. All right, we'll continue on with the planning board meeting and our agenda. First item is the minor site plan review for 8688 Prospect Street, which was continued uh, from July 7th, and I believe there's been um, a visit to the ZBA and some other updated information. So uh, are we going to hear from, which, which one of the representatives of the applicant would like to speak first? Uh, Madam Chair, Attorney Douglas DeShane. Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Douglas DeShane from Finneran and Nicholson, uh, representing 8688 Prospect Street, LLC, uh, Blake Wilcox, manager. Uh, Mr. Wilcox is on the uh, call with us this evening, as well as Stephen Sawyer from Design Consultants, Inc., and Matt Langus from Scott M. Brown Architects. So we have our development team here um, uh, to answer any questions. If I could, uh, well, that first slide, I just wanted to give you a quick uh, review and overview of where we are. Uh, this, the yellow uh, area uh, depicts the property at 8688 Prospect Street. You can see it is at the corner of Prospect Street and Carson Street. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, you'll recall that our original project summary was to do renovations in addition to the existing five unit building. We had proposed a new three car garage off of Parsons Street. Uh, we were creating permeable parking areas. Uh, the proposed additions in garage uh, did not uh, add any new conformities. And as you know, it triggered minor site plan review as well as a special permit review with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, just quickly, if we go to the next two or three slides, I just wanted to remind the board, this is the property. These are a view from Prospect Street and the corner of Prospect and Parsons. We could go to, there we go. This is moving down along Parsons, as you'll recall. And then the last slide uh, shows the far end of the property where the uh, proposed garage uh, is to be located. 
Uh, next slide, please. Uh, you'll recall at, at the meeting of July 7th, the board did conclude that our application was complete. Uh, the board voted to grant the requested waivers we had uh, requested at that time. Uh, the board did uh, propose some special conditions for us to consider. One is that, the, that we would install the replacement street trees per the uh, tree commission chair prior to occupancy. Um, there would be a requirement of an as-built plan provided before occupancy. And then last, it, we were requested to do revisions to the prospect street landscaping. And then of course, the board did continue the hearing pending completion of our ZBA a special permit process. There were uh, some changes uh, agreed to or requested during the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, those changes are reflected in changes to our architectural plans. Uh, first, on uh, plan A2-1, there was a single existing exterior door that was originally proposed to be uh, removed entirely. Uh, that has been added back into the, uh, to the proposal and the door itself will be replaced in its existing location and size. Um, also, there was a proposed sliding glass door to be added to the building that has now been removed and double hung windows are proposed to be located in that uh, slider location. Those two changes are also reflected in plans EC6 and EC7, and I'll show you those in just a sec. Um, the, these changes ultimately resulted in us being able to reduce our proposed wall removal, uh, which as you know, is, is reviewed under the DCOD regulations. Uh, we have decreased, uh, we're still below the 25% uh, threshold. However, we've um, gone from 24.97% to 24.26%, uh, thereby providing uh, a greater cushion from the 25% uh, limit. So uh, those were changes agreed to with the zoning board. Thank you, next slide. As you can see uh, where this at green arrow is, that is the location of where we were proposing to eliminate um, a, a single exterior door. And if you can hop to the next slide, please. You can see that that door has been added back in. So that was that first change I mentioned. Uh, the next slide, uh, you can see where that arrow is. That is the location where it was originally proposed to put a sliding glass door. And then the next slide shows that we have now agreed to uh, replace that or to replace that door with uh, two double hung windows. So those are uh, the changes to the building that um, resulted in a reduction of wall uh, impacts. There was a uh, next slide, please. Thank you. There were also uh, proposed changes to the garage, which are reflected in the uh, revised garage elevations. The garage itself was reduced from a three bay garage to two bays. Uh, one window was removed from the garage and a single exterior, exterior door was added. Um, as per the planning board uh, request, when we met last, the, the proposed paver walkway uh, along Prospect Street was changed to a narrower stepping stone walk with a much larger uh, planted garden area to be placed in front of the uh, building along Prospect Street. And of course, the site plan was changed to reflect the changes to the garage. In addition to reducing it to, to a two bay garage, uh, we also slid it over two feet to the left, actually farther from the from the neighboring lot line. And what that did it is allowed better uh, parking for spaces P and three, P3 and P4, which I will show you at the, on the next slides. So here is our original uh, elevations of the garage. As you can see, it had uh, three doors and then three windows in the rear. Next slide, please. And now we have reduced that to two bays. There are only two windows in the back, but we did add an additional exterior door on the uh, right elevation. Um, presumably this garage is gonna be split uh, in the middle and that way there's a garage door and an entrance door to each of the two bays. 
And then with respect to the site plan, this is the uh, site plan we, we showed at the uh, July 7th meeting with the three car garage. And if you look along Prospect Street, the, okay, we, this is the uh, revision. Um, you can see that it now reflects the smaller two car garage, which has been uh, slid over to our right in looking at the plan, which allows for two spots to the left of the garage. And then if you look at the Prospect Street, that, that, um, that, yeah, that area, that um, planter has been increased in size as the board had asked. And if you can see, there's just a small stone walkway, very narrow walkway that will lead from that parking spot over to the front um, bricked entrance walkway. So we did um, respect the board's request in that regard. Um, I did go through at the last meeting uh, the mine of site plan review criteria and proposed to the board how we met those. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them, but I don't want to take up the board's time in reiterating uh, information I had presented before. So we can move on to the next slide. That is the, there we go. So in conclusion, uh, Members of the board, uh, the proposed improvements, the addition, the garage and the pervious driveways and the landscape enhancements will certainly improve the aesthetics and the sustainability of this multifamily home. In doing so, we do not believe this project will be detrimental in any way to the neighborhood. The addition of the garage are in keeping with the agri architectural style of the existing structure and the neighborhood in general. Uh, it certainly will not adversely impact traffic, parking or pedestrian safety as we are improving off street parking and, and also pedestrian walkways in and about the, pro the property. There is no change of use proposed and the minor increase in the building size will not cause a dramatic or unreasonable strain on any of the existing public services servicing the property. Uh, there should actually be no increase in the um, services. Um, the improvements will not create any adverse air quality, noise, glare, or odors. The proposed improvements are being done in conformity with all of your zoning requirements and applicable building and health codes. And so will not be adverse, will not adversely impact the environment, open space, public health, or safety. Overall, the proposed environments, while not causing adverse impacts to the neighborhood, will, in our opinion, be uh, beneficial to the neighborhood. It's gonna increase the property value and, and make this a more aesthetically pleasing and, and functional property. So we are happy to answer any further questions the board has. Um, um, as I said, our, our development team is here, so uh, we should be able to address any questions you have. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Did anyone else on your team want to speak before we um, commence with our comments and questions? Uh, no, Madam Chair, I think we're just available if you do have comments and questions. Okay, I'll open it to planning board members. Uh, who would like um, to speak? Sorry, Chair Sontag, did you want to open up for a public comment just to see if there's anything? Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Thank you for reminding me. At least I'm consistent, I always forget. Um, we will take public comment. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand electronically, give us your name and your address, and try to limit your comments to two minutes. Who would like to speak? And Director Port will um, let you in. Thank you, Chair Sontag. It does not look like we have any takers, thank you. Close public comment section and go back to the board. And I reiterate my re, re say again my question. Would anyone like to ask a question or make a comment um, to the development team? I I have a small question. Um, I haven't understood the reason for the small walkway across the front of the property. Uh, it doesn't seem to gain you anything from the sidewalk. Just it's just a curiosity. Hey Rick, it's uh, uh, Blake Wilcox. Um, no, it's a good point. I, when I put this in there initially, it really was to the people that would be parking on this side if they wanted to have access to go through um, 
basically not having to walk on the sidewalk if they want to just kind of walk from the driveway across that piece of um, grass over to the brick walkway up into that doorway. It, again, it was more just kind of connecting um, the driveway to that brick walkway by, by a path. It, again, it was more just a, a vision that I had for that space. Um, so there's really no you know, sort of big um, vision here. It, it was really just sort of, it, it, it felt better than walking out on the sidewalk, along the sidewalk, and then um, onto the, the brick walkway, especially if they're bringing in groceries or something. Just a, a little shorter distance. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I'm curious to know why uh, the ZBA and you agreed to um, limit the garage to only two bays. So, Bonnie, I'll take this one again. It's it's Blake Wilcox. Um, I think that. One of the um, one of the uh, some of the feedback from one of the members was that the community felt a little bit too big, and I I had been very open that I had teetered on you know is three or two sort of the right you know the right feel case, um, and one of the board members had said you know geez it, it would feel better as a two versus a three, and I again I was forty nine percent fifty one sort of teetering on three and three anyways, so it was something that I said hey. If, I'm, I'm kind of with you on this one. So we, we agreed to reduce it from three to two. Thank you. And I noted from our previous um, conversation that we did have another um, condition we were talking about, and I don't know, well, yes, it would be separate as another condition to require as-built plan for review before issuance of the occupancy permit. And I believe that might have been Rick who recommended that. I'm not sure uh, to speak to why that would be important to include as a, condi a special condition. Am I correct, Rick, that you had requested that? I remember the discussion and I remember Andy talking about how that was a standard, uh, standard process anyway. I don't remember the particulars of it. I think there was something, there was a reference that would be, oh, I know what it was. It was it was demonstrating the amount of open space, I think, in the back or something like that. There was a question about the open space calculation. Uh, and so I think it was, uh, we were just gonna confirm that they met that requirement, that they met the open space square footage as part of that as built. So, yeah, so Rick, it's Blake again, sorry. Um, yes, no, and we would do that anyways as part of the special permit to do an as-built um, to basically show that we didn't just hot top the entire site because look, we all know what happened in some of these projects is all of a sudden you show up and they black top the entire site. That's why they, the, the town now requires the as-builts and basically have it certified um, that, we've, that we've adhered to the stipulations uh, as part of the special permit and as part of this, this process. Thank you. Okay, so just confirming there's only the one special permit, special condition, um, which is the sidewalk and street trees um, specification. Yes, this was to, I, I believe in the condition was to replace, uh, and I, I could go back and look at it, but one yeah. or two of the trees along the For the specifications, yep. exactly. Yeah, okay, I just want to make sure we, we have that incorporated into the final decision. Um, they have, um, I was gonna look at now at the, um, the findings and rather than go through all of them, um, I just wanted to see if anybody, if anything pops out to anybody that you wanna highlight. I had one question on the land use planning uh, finding. This building will continue to add to the mix of uses within the city. In, in what way is that uh, true, Mr. Wilcox? Well, Madam Chair, if I could answer that right. one. Yes. Um, I, I believe it's the fact that we'll, we will be maintaining uh, a multi-unit building, multi-family building, which provides another option to, as you know, single family or duplex structure. So. Um, I know that, um, and it has been that way. We have no control over whether it's rental, home ownership, or a condo. Um, do you? Can you tell us what it will be, just for our edification? 
Yes, uh, Madam Chair, will be uh, condominium ownership. Yeah, that kind of mix is not terribly helpful to the city, but um, I just put it on the record that we're losing rental properties here. Um, it's not our none of our business what the owners decide to do, um, but it's unfortunate. And for the Development and performance standards. I'll throw it back to board members. If any of them stand out to you that you'd like to have commented on, please do so at this point. I think they've all been covered in general in the summary um, by the applicant. Bonnie, there are a couple of um, places where the, the findings refer to requests by the applicant. And I'm just wondering whether that's really appropriate. So, you know, under under uh, site plan criteria, traffic, parking, public access says the applicant has asked for a waiver from the requirement to submit a traffic report. And under site plan and architectural design says the applicant has asked for a waiver from the requirement. Um, I think if we haven't already, I think we've already granted those waivers. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So I almost think that those sentences should be deleted because they're it's passed. You know, we've, we've yeah. already gone past that. Um, and, and again, to your point earlier about the adding to the mix of uses, um, I almost think that can be deleted too. I think that the, the sentence stands by, the under land use planning stands by itself. It says the project is compatible with land use goals for the city and involves the preservation and renovation of housing units in the city. So I'm, I'm just concerned that adding those extra sentences doesn't add anything to our decision. Okay. This is Andy. I would concur and just recommend that, uh, as uh, Member Tanter, uh, Tanter had just said, take out that uh, from all the uh, bullets and leave the waivers as granted earlier in the decision. Okay. Yeah, there seems to be a combination in the staff report of notes to us and the actual findings, and that should be cleaner in the future. So it's good to get started looking at it that way. Um, and um, it'll help me when I read the final document before I sign it. So thank you for catching that. Anything under the, similarly, under the development and performance standards that needs to be edited out? I, I, I referred to that under the site plan and architectural design. Oh yeah, there later. it is. Yeah, I was wondering where that was. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Thank you. All right. Okay, the rest of those um, stand on their own as findings. Any further discussion? Anything else uh, the applicant's team would like to add? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, I'm gonna call for a motion before I do though, I have to check with one of our members to see if she's eligible to vote. And did you listen to the recording of this meeting? Because you were not present at the first hearing on this and I need to hear you, you're muted. I'm sorry, no, I did not. Okay, so you're not eligible as, um, and Bob is not, but that gives us five votes, which is what we need for a minor site plan. Um, so we should be good to go. I don't hear anybody making any noises otherwise. Let's find out with them. I need a motion. Um, yes, I need a motion as um, written here. Um, who would please make that motion and read it? I will make the motion, Bonnie. Um, I make the motion to approve the minor site plan review application for 8688 Prospect Street in accordance with the draft findings and draft special condition provided by the Office of Planning and Development. And I guess I would add with the changes to the um, findings that we discussed tonight. To findings and performance standards. Yes. And may I have a second? I'll second, Alden. Okay, and let me just take roll call for approval. Alden? Yes. Beth? Yes. Ann? Abstain. Bob? Abstain. Rick? Yes. Don? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. So it is approved. You are good to go.
Madam Chair, thank members you. of the board, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you, and um, we appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all very much. This is Blake. Thank you, everyone, for, for, well, for the time tonight. Good. Okay. Request for the ex an extension of uh, the 36 Colby Farm Lane. Um, this is uh, another one of those. This is the Blue Wave Solar Project requesting a one-year extension of the site plan approval decision. Um, pretty straightforward, but I do believe we have a representative. If you'd like to speak, you're welcome to. Yes, uh, Josh from Blue Wave. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, this is Josh Larcy from Blue Wave Solar. Um, I reached out to, to Andy a few or several weeks back, um, just in anticipation of the uh, as written expiration of the site plan approval. Um, and speaking with Andy, you know, of course, um, due to the state of emergency and tolling, um, wasn't identified as a hard issue, but did just want to go ahead and formally submit the request for the extension. And uh, just briefly checking with the board, um, you know, I've been interfacing with a few members uh, from the city, including Andy, on a number of items for the project, but um, just for the board's uh, edification to let you know that, uh, you know, continuing to work on the project. Obviously there has been um, some delays just due, you know, due to various factors um, over the last uh, year, year and a half. Uh, but we are you know, continuing to work on the project, uh, currently uh, working to uh, <clears throat> firm down a contract with, it, with an EPC uh, contractor. And um, uh, again, just trying to close out all, all open items of the city. So uh, looking forward to getting the project built, um, but just wanted to kind of add Andy's recommendation, uh, go ahead and just formally request <clears throat> the extension on the written decision. So am I correct in assuming that you haven't even broken ground yet if you're still talking to contractors? Correct. So yeah, we have we haven't we have not yet submitted for a building permit. Um, the hope would be to do that uh, in the coming months. Um, this project uh, will, would be uh, part of a portfolio of projects we'd be looking to kind of release construction on all simultaneously. But um, but yeah, so have you have not yet applied for a building permit, but um, are in the process of of uh, pulling together fully uh, fully engineered uh, construction level drawings. Okay, any other questions from board members? Um, it's me, Bonnie Don. I, I agree wholeheartedly to provide the uh, uh, schedule relief, but, but I do have a, a question. I'm a bit confused, not, not a bit confused. I, I just like clarification and, and this may be just, you know, be sure everything's in writing. Um, in the, in the uh, planning board report, and I appreciate the, the one typo with respect to the date, but the tolling, which is from March to June, what's it, 14, 12 months, whatever. So I guess my question is, if there was no action taken on this, that, doesn't this permit expire 14 months after the original expiration expiration date, Andy, or Bonnie? No, it's two, isn't it two years, Andy? Correct, yeah, it's, we still have a valid permit. What it says here, though, it says on 8-7-19, the planning board voted to approve the application for the major site plan review, whereas the, whereas the approval itself was granted on 10-16-21. That, that was supposed to be 10-16-19. I understand that. The one-year extension will be 10, from 10-16-21 to 10-16-22. I understand that. I guess my only question is, how does the tolling uh, provision impact this? So, uh, actually, I'm... I guess I'm glad you asked that question. So that the tolling is a bit of a uh, a bit of a complication for every time these come up because you have to look at the uh, as is put in the staff report the tolling period. What we thought we talked about this internally. Caitlin and I discussed with Jennifer Blanchet, and we we discussed. Um, we think it's there's benefit here to being very specific about the date of the extension uh, in the vote uh, for the extension rather than relying solely upon the um, the tolling. Um, itself. So um, what is being suggested here is, as, as you pointed out, Don, that there's a typo in the staff report that the original uh, decision, I guess, was signed on 10, 16, 19, not 21. Um, and as Bonnie pointed out, you know, they have a two-year term. So we're really talking about um, the extension from 10, 16, 21 to 10, 16, uh, 22 as a one-year extension to the permit that they currently have. 
understand again i i if i was josh and blue wave i would be requesting the same thing in front of the planning board i just wanted to understand it from a point of, of just facts um that th this really is extended for up up into 22 but again uh i'm happy to make the motion to uh, to, to extend it uh 10 16 22. i'll take that as a motion do i have a second Second, Rick. Okay. And I'll take roll for approval. Um, this is, stands on its own. Everybody who's here is eligible to vote as far as I understand. Is that correct, Andy? That's correct. Okay. Alden? Yes. Beth? Yes. Anne? I think I'll abstain. I did not vote for this project initially. Bob? Yes. Uh, Rick? Yes. Don? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. So you have your extension. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Chair uh, and members of the board. Um, and again, just uh, look forward to continuing to working with the city and uh, moving the project right along. So thank you for your time. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And request for lot, for lot release at Port Village Lot 22, which is at the address 8 Dorothy Lucy Drive. I understand um, there we're not expecting anyone to come on behalf of the applicant. So, Andy, you want to walk us through this? Sure. Um, that's uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm actually just going to show uh, two things real quick just to make it simple for everyone. Um, looking at the city's GIS, just so you can orient yourselves, uh, the subject lot that's in question to be released is uh, shown here. I've highlighted it in our GIS. Um, this is actually a, an old subdivision. Um, the remaining, the other lots in the subdivision have been released, but uh, this particular one hadn't. This comes up quite frequently, I think, as some of you already know from experience, either uh, on your own or as a board member. Um, sometimes closings are happening and um, a title examiner realizes that something uh, is still loose in there and needs to be resolved. Um, so in this instance, it's uh, all the other lots in the subdivision have been um, have been reviewed uh, and released. Uh, the plan of reference is here. And again, you can see that same lot. I just highlighted that for you, but um, you can see that same lot. Uh, there is an easement that was required and that is on record um, that provides access, uh, a, uh, a pedestrian access or public access on the, the property. Uh, that's been recorded and you can kind of make it out there, that photo. Um, at any rate, um, the office recommends uh, or has no objection to the release of the lot uh, based on the completion of the project um, and there being no outstanding issues that we're aware of. Great, thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay, I'll type a motion to uh, approve the request, request for a release of the covenant for this property. So moved, Dan. Thank you, Ann. And a second? A second, Alden. Okay, roll call. Alden? Yes. Beth? Yes. Ann? Yes. Bob? Yes. Rick? Yes. Don? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. That is approved. Okay, moving right along. Approval of the minutes from eight, our last meeting, 8421. I'll take a motion, then we'll see if there are any comments. Motion to approve. Anybody out there? I'll move to approve them, Bonnie. Thank you, Beth. Yep. Second? I'll second, Alden. Any comments? I've sent some in already, so I'm all set. Okay. Bonnie, um, yeah. I am confused because what I sent yesterday, comment on yesterday was the July 21st minutes. Right, we didn't meet on the 4th. Oh, ah, I'm just going by the agenda. That's, That's the confusion. Right. Okay. That's <laughs> yeah. where it's wrong. So the agenda is wrong. And yes. it should be, yeah, I know. It's 721 21. I, I uh, still remember. Yeah. Dylan, 
Apologies when the when the office prepares these draft uh, agendas, it might have just been left there, assuming that the uh, fourth would have been the meeting. So apologies on the behalf of the office. So the motion should be different then. Uh, let's scrap the whole motion. Start all over again. Beth, could you make the motion again, please? Yes, I move to approve the minutes of seven twenty one twenty one. Thank you, Alden. Second. Okay. A further discussion, Alden, you've already said you sent your notes in. Um, yes. Luke and I had some minor edits, um, nothing substantial that I could see. Anyone else have anything that you'd like to bring up on those minutes? If not, I'll call the roll. I'm getting tired of going in this order. I'm going to go in reverse order. <laughs> uh, see if I can, well, I get to go first. Yes. Don? Yes. Rick? Yes. Bob? Yes. Anne? Yes. Beth? Yes. Alden? Yes. That was confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to really read them. OK, um, that's everything on the agenda um, that's itemized. Um, Andy has already alluded to our meetings Going forward will be a mix of face-to-face -face and hybrid. Um, Andy, would you like to clarify a little bit about the choice of the senior center and how we're gonna manage this whole thing? Sure, thank you. Um, so uh, we've been working in the office, uh, working with uh, in relay with Rick and Bonnie about um, how we can transition back to in-person meetings. Uh, I do know that there may be some discussion in the coming days about uh, the Delta variant and so forth, but um, we're still on track to um, make the hybrid meetings uh, you know, going forward. So uh, to make a long story short, uh, we ran into some issues in the council chambers trying to maintain the, um, the bookings for those on a go forward basis. Um, although we had previously met there, um, you know, generally on a regular basis before the pandemic. Um, in response to that, we looked to the senior center. That was the next uh, most viable and appropriate space. It's also um, a very, you know, it's a, it's a good functional space. Um, I would actually say a little bit better than the, the council chambers in some ways uh, in terms of layout. Um, but at any rate, uh, we were working to book those spaces. Some bookings uh, had already been done, some larger events, um, and there were some folks that were concerned about having to relocate or, uh, or uh, shift those folks. Um, so what we've talked about uh, was uh, moving to the hybrid meetings, and the first meeting that we plan to do that at is at our very next meeting on 9-1, uh, September 1st, um, at the Senior Center, uh, but with the hybrid aspect. So we're basically, you would be able to connect via Zoom or the applicants would be able to connect via Zoom and so forth. Uh, we are going to be testing that uh, next week, the equipment set up just to make sure it's all working smoothly. Uh, but we are trying to do the same setup that the council and the school committee have been trying, which is the OWL camera. Um, that is intended essentially to, uh, rather than uh, you each of you being captured by your own cameras, if you're using them, um, having a, a device in the room that's basically trying to capture everybody uh, and display on the, the screen what, what's being shown. So. Um, I have to still experiment with that uh, piece of equipment, uh, just make sure we understand how smoothly that can integrate. But uh, basically, it would still function largely as a Zoom meeting. We would have a screen in the room where you'll see the materials being displayed. Um, if you bring your own device, of course, you can use that with the, the Wi-Fi um, to look at anything yourselves. Um, but um, you may not, uh, unless you're bringing your own uh, laptop or device, you may be picked up by the OWL camera as opposed to, obviously, your own um, uh, other than that, uh, we'll have just anticipate there may be public comment that we see on Zoom or those that are remote, as well as those that are physically in the room if they are attending in person. Um, and uh, as, as Bonnie alluded to, we had because we ran into some issues with those uh, bookings that could not be shifted. Um, uh, what we are doing now is um, I will actually be sending out to the board a list of dates um, just so you can you can think about them on your calendar and, and mark them off. But they will be ones where we are solely remote. And that is because uh, we ran into the double bookings essentially that would have been in that room. Um, and there was a desire to, to uh, maintain the commitments that have been made to some other folks who had booked. Um, uh, some of these going back to when the pandemic, you know, months ago when the pandemic was happening and there was assumption that boards were meeting. So at any rate, um, we'll be, I'll be sending a list out to you of the ones we're meeting remotely only, um, but otherwise our plan is to start meeting in hybrid where you can meet physically, uh, but there's still the uh, remote access for anybody who, who needs or wants that. Andy, does that mean that when we meet in person, we must be masked? Uh, actually, as of right now, I am not aware of a requirement of that. I do think at the senior center, uh, there is a requirement for the staff there, but I believe in the coming days, we are going to have that mask mandate um, 
uh, officially. And so I would, to your question, thank you for asking, I would anticipate folks being asked to bring or wear a mask. Um, you know, I, I don't know how uh, that may affect the audio and so forth, the owl camera uh, and things like that. But, um, you know, in some ways the Zoom uh, can work a little better, but I would anticipate by that point there being a mask mandate for uh, folks and ourselves meeting in that space. And that space will be open to the public as well, correct? Correct. This, right. And if, you know, of course, we'll be, we'll advise you if there's anything that changes, you know, uh, Board of Health, you know, uh, order and like that, that might affect us. But otherwise, I would anticipate meeting there physically, the hybrid access, and, and as uh, Bonnie had mentioned, probably uh, with the requirement that we wear masks. And also, I want to make it really clear that any board member who wants to can still remain remote, or if it's more convenient um, for one meeting and not another, you know, you'll always have the option to uh, zoom in. Um, just make sure you're there on time because otherwise we won't know if you're coming or not. Um, and the last thing I was going to say is, well, whatever it was. Hmm. Bonnie, I have something if perhaps you need another minute to remember <laughs> and it will jog your memory if that works for you. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Don. I, I knew I could depend on you. I'll buy, I'll buy you some time. Hey, okay. um, I'll, I'll, of course, I'll defer to, to you, Bonnie, but um, and, and don't intend to say anything, but um, with respect to perhaps any discussions that may have occurred since our last executive session, I would just uh, ask that, you know, again, your, your, your decision whether you want to schedule an executive session to discuss um, if anything, in fact, has been transpired. Thank you. Good point. When it does, I will. That, that I have nothing, you know, there's nothing more. It's in progress. Thanks. Well, whatever it was, if, if it comes back again, I'll send you a note, but I don't think it was that terribly important, but it was about meeting. Um, oh, I know what it was. We're going to be streamed um, uh, live on cable, right, Andy? Uh, my understanding is that they take the feed from Zoom and are able to publish that on cable. It's the same thing as folks, you know, watching on the internet at home, of course. Uh, but I believe that they have that ability now. It's something that they've recently tried to integrate. Right. So that's consistent with what started, a, what, two years ago, which only lasted for a year. Um, when we were meeting city council chambers that people could, you know, kick back, watch us on TV and eat popcorn or throw it at us or whatever. Um, so that's different from people having to log in with Zoom. So we may have a broader audience, um, but that's just to let you know that we can be seen by, by different people on different uh, devices from different sources. Okay. That's all I've got. Oh, well, there is, is there anything else from you, Andy? Uh, not from me, no. I, as we already mentioned earlier this evening, there's another zoning hearing, but we've aligned it with one where we've continued. So you already know about that. Right. Okay, well, I turn it over to Ann. Yes, um, I um, <clears throat> have decided to resign from the planning board. Um, I have some uh, short-term orthopedic issues to address this fall, and my resignation will be effective October 1, um, as I have a surgery scheduled on the 4th. So um, it's been a pleasure to work with all of you, and I uh, wish you the best on your future deliberations. Oh, Anne. We have to say goodbye a second time, some of us. <laughs> Me, anyway. Perhaps the third time will be a charm. Yeah. Hey, Don, were you here when she did this little routine on us the first time? Unequivocally, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's two of us that are just... <laughs> well, my term had ended that time. No excuses, Anne. None <laughs> whatsoever. The good news was you came back. I'm not going to say another word. We are so glad to have you. We're going to miss you. What can I say? Thank you.
Okay, we need another candidate. We're working on one right now. I don't want to say anything until the mayor gives her okay. Hopefully she will. That would be MJ's replacement, um, who said she would stay on as long as we needed her and does not have that flexibility. So uh, I don't know if I can talk MJ into staying later than October 1st to cover for Ann. We'll see. But that does not take the burden off anybody's shoulders to get out there and find us candidates because we do a, a very good job of finding the right kind of people. The mayor said today to me that she is um, finding it a struggle to keep boards and commissions um, with volunteers and she's considering another public media request. Um, you know that's not my favorite way to go because you don't know what you're going to get. So we have a lot more control if we even through friends of friends of friends find people. So I will make that request one more time um, to dig around, keep your eyes open when you're out and about, um, looking through your contacts, whatever. Um, someone who would fit on the board. You've all been on the board or some of you have been a little more recent than others, but kind of know what we have to offer and where we have gaps in knowledge and experience. So I'll leave that to you. And I trust we will find yet another candidate. We always have, and we will just do it. So thanks for keeping um, an eye out. That's all I have for tonight. Anybody else have anything else? Rick, that looks really good. Did she just bake something and leave it for you? She was out at a potluck and brought stuff back. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to go. So let me, let me just uh, say one thing. Um, I am, as part of Storm Surge, I'm doing a presentation on the 31st at the Senior Center um, on zoning and resilience. And um, I uh, hadn't thought an awful lot about the topic before I agreed to do it. So I've been doing a lot of research <laughs> and hopefully by the time the 31st comes around, I'll have a lot of uh, good things to say. Also, there's gonna be a panel after my presentation. Andy is gonna be on the panel to kind of give the uh, local zoning perspective and the, and the local um, resiliency committee perspective. And Jen Hughes from Merrimack Valley Planning Commission is gonna talk about it from a regional point of view. She's on the Conservation Commission in Ipswich and is also the chair of the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. And our friend, Nick Cracknell, will talk about it. Uh, we'll talk about his experience with a study um, with uh, looking at resilience in historic districts. And um, I suspect he may also provide some of his private perspective as well. So um, if you're interested in another night out, Tuesday, October 31st. And that'll still be on Zoom as well? It will be. I'm trying to think how, how they're doing it. I'm not sure it's on Zoom, but it's going to be filmed. So it'll, right, be on so YouTube, it'll be on YouTube afterwards. So if you want real time, if we want real time exposure, we better get ourselves over to this. Uh, yes, I think so, yes. I'm not really sure, but I think that I think that the Newbury and Salisbury cable stations are broadcasting it live, but Newburyport is only doing it on uh, taping it and showing it later for some reason. Rick, I'm sorry, did you say August 31st or? August 31st, two okay. weeks from yesterday. Yep, and what time? Seven o'clock at the Senior Center. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right, um, if there's nothing further, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved, Rick. Okay, thank you, second. Second, Alden. Okay. Don? Yes. Rick? Yes. Bob? Yes. Ann? Yes. Beth? Yes. Alden? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.